We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week, building your afford a plane. If you look over my shoulder, this is the episode where we put the tail wheel on. Very exciting. Let's take a look at the materials and procedures we need to make a very nice tail wheel for our aircraft. Here's the spring I'm going to use. Now this was purchased from a retail outlet. In fact it was the trailer parts superstore but you can get this other places also its part number is a UNA 176 and what we're going to do is remove this center section and that comes off with a nut so that will be easy to do and according to the plans we want about 19 inches of this so we're going to end up cutting it and I'm going to use our bandsaw with a metal blade to cut across keep in mind this is spring steel so it's a little bit harder than a mild steel so we want to cut it slowly and same with drilling when we go to drill it we want to make sure we don't overdo it and overheat it the problem with drilling too fast and too hard is that it creates heat and that will work harden an area and if you've never experienced a work hardened area you'll know that it's almost impossible to drill through so you just want to take it easy and use lubrication when drilling or cutting so basically we're going to put our tail wheel down here now for that I've used this caster wheel now we got this off of Amazon four or five inches across and a castering bearing up here and I believe this is half inch so where this is going to go is something like this and then about 19 inches and then we're going to look for a flat area up here and cut it and this area will attach to the bottom of the fuselage frame one issue I would like to address is that because the fuselage frame at the back is going to attach here, this curved area makes attachment a little less desirable. I would like to flatten this out, so I'm going to put this in a small press and try and bend this till we get it more flat. Because if we're attaching to a flat surface, it's going to be tough to do because we're going to have a gap when we try and tighten down the bolts to the flat area. Not sure it's easy to see, but this is kind of a curved area, and ideally that should be flat. This is an inexpensive Harbor Freight press. By repeatedly pressing in the opposite direction of the bend, you can flatten the spring out nicely. And here's the profile after bending. We push the ram here to straighten this out a little bit, bend it down, and then we got our flat area in here. The cut is going to be made right here, and we'll take this over to our bandsaw that cuts metal. Make sure you have a metal blade, not a wood blade, to cut through this. And here is the profile after cutting. Fuselage on top of here 
and the tail wheel down here. So we need to drill a half inch hole here and then a couple of quarter inch holes here. We'll do those on our drill press. And here's how the spring turned out. Got our half inch hole here and our two quarter inch holes there. And this comes in about pretty close to what the plans call for size and length. Now we do need to build a horn across this edge so that we can connect our control cables and springs to for turning. And our next step will be to mount this with the two quarter inch holes to the bottom of the fuselage tube. Now looking at your plans we want to position the spring at the right spot and it goes underneath the flap of the end of our fuselage and it's about five inches in from the end. Now we have our holes drilled already so I'm basically just going to mark the end hole, pick my spot and mark it. Um, I don't have to drill it through this, I just need to make a quarter inch hole in the right spot and then when I put it up here I'll have to match the second quarter inch hole behind it. Just be sure not to interfere with your uh, bolts that are already going lengthwise the other direction. You sure don't want to hit those as you go up. So we're going to need to make a double drill, one that goes through both walls. One way to get a 90 degree drill up because it's going to be easy to drill through the first wall of the aluminum but then when you get to the second one I use a long drill bit and we've done this before use a 90 degree angle and that way you can line it up as you drill to make sure you're getting it 90 degrees from both directions and that worked out real nice and you'll come up through the hole properly. Once you get it started you don't have to keep this in place but locating that hole initially is what this is all about. So you get a nice straight drill through to the top. So I've drilled my hole through and I drilled it up to quarter inch. And I'm now going to put a quarter inch bolt through the top. And then attach temporarily our spring. I'll use a castle nut so that I can put it on easily. And what this is going to let me do is to be able to mark the second hole accurately. And I will I can do that a number of ways. I can either use my marker and drill a very accurate uh, line inside the hole. I can also use a drip pin, a punch that's quarter inch and tap it and that will give me a divot. That's probably the most accurate way after lining this up just right. So my other quarter inch holes here and I'll just tap that up with a pin and a hammer and get the exact location of my second drill. Because with that tiny mark I can start then with the eighth inch and then do the same technique to get a 90 degree into the upper side of the tube and then drill it up to a quarter inch. Here's the punch pin I'm going to use. The diameter is quarter inch and it has a point, sharp point at the end. So I'll just stick this through the second hole in the bottom of the spring and hammer up through the hole and that'll leave me a nice point in the center of the hole for drilling. I can take the, the spring away and drill. I could leave the spring in place and drill a quarter inch all the way up and through, but we all have our choices. Now I just drilled the second hole and I used the punch method that worked out best and then up drilled to quarter inch. Now this bolt won't go down because of the cross tube in the way, so we're going to have to go from the bottom up on this one and 
I'm using an AM15. All right. So with this looking pretty good, I can go ahead and deburr the holes and put the permanent nuts in place and tighten this down and then move on to the castering wheel itself. And here's our completed tail spring assembly. Plenty of spring action. Now we need to install a horn onto our castering wheel so that we can rotate it. And so I need to attach this horn somehow to the top. Now I've decided to make a circular cutout here so that this would sit in further and attempt to attach at these locations. So let me make this cut out here. I have removed the wheel so that I have better access here. Let me get some cutting done. So I made this cut out here so that it would sit on the lip and have a little more stability. These holes I drilled, but I'm not going to use because they would come much too close to the edge. So what I intend on doing is turning it and then right in here putting an angle like this and one on each side. And this will make a little more sense after I finish it and you can see what I had in mind. And here are the brackets. I used 316 stainless steel rivets, nice and strong. And the idea then is I will take my horn and it'll go flat and I'll put a rivet here and here and that'll give it a nice surface for it to attach to and it'll be nice and stable. So that'll be my last step. Two rivets. And here's our horn with two holes and I'll rivet this on in place and then we need a hole at each end here. And we'll be all set. And here we go. Now my last step is this collar has some ridges on each side and I'm going to use a Dremel tool to grind it off. And that will ensure that our spring will go all the way down to the surface. And we're all ready to install. The uh, ends of the rivets came close to touching the wheel but plenty of room in there. We'll go install this. And there you have it. Now, next time, we have things like the fuel tank, the seat, the rudder pedals, all sorts of things that we still need to get to. So, see you next time. And in the meantime, back to building.